Hello. Anyone in Canada, North America, is familiar with the type of plugs they have there. That's pretty near how they look. Now, I am in New Zealand on a holiday. And as you can see, that's not going to work. Now, traditionally, there is an adapter we can use. You can pick up adapters at most... Um, well, lots of places, electronic places, random shopping, and these will fit into the local plug. And then you can fit your own plug in there. Now these adapters, all they do is change the shape of the plug. They do not convert the voltage. That's something a lot of people have made mistakes over. So in North America, all the voltage is generally 110 to a maximum 120 volts. Whereas in New Zealand and Australia, where this will also work, you're looking at about 240 volts. So if you want to plug anything direct in, you have to make sure that it has the has universal voltage it's almost impossible to read this writing but if you can see it it will say it's rated from 100 to 240 volts so basically it's self converting this is a charger for a Philips electrical razor most um, cell phone and camera chargers are also multi voltage like that and if you don't have one that's multi-voltage, if you want to put something that's 110 volts into a New Zealand plug, you must get a voltage converter as well as a plug adapter. So the problem with this is that it just takes one thing. Now what if there's more than one of us who wants to charge cell phones we have other items. So before I came here, I bought this. It's a little power bar that takes three different plugs. And in New Zealand, bought this. A plug. I'm going to cut the Canadian plug off the end and wire in the New Zealand plug. Now an important note, this one does not have a surge protector or a circuit breaker. Um, maybe an electrician will know better if I'm right or wrong on this, but I'm thinking I wanted one that is blank, just direct wiring to the plugs, because the Canadian voltage this circuit breaker is designed to work at 110 volts with 15 amps. New Zealand power supplies 240 volts at 10 amps. So I'm not sure if it will conflict with any surge protector or circuit breaker there. So I made sure I bought one that does not have that. One important thing to note is that when buying the New Zealand plug, it must be a 10 amp plug. Because 15 amps are also available. You'll also see a 10 amp is written right there. I don't know if you can see it. Beside the um, earthing prong. If you get a 15 amp, the earth prong is wider. It will not fit into here. This is just a standard 10 amp. It's only for special application to get the 15 amp. So make sure it's a 10, not a 15, or else the earth will not fit. And that's how it differentiates between the power rating of the two. Now I originally bought another plug. However, the hole is a bit too small. This one's a lot bigger. And um, the size of the cable here is so thick that it would not fit in here. I actually tried doing it already and it just was too tight. I would have had to leave these wires exposed. 
went to um, a proper hardware store and bought this one. It's got a much bigger hole. You can take a bigger gauge of cable through there. So I shouldn't have to leave any of the wires hanging out this way. Simple design, it just flips open each direction. Now before you wire it up, there's something very important to note. You have to know which one is the power, which is the neutral, and the earth. And in relation to that, which one on a New Zealand plug will also be power and earth. Now in North American wiring, the black, or sometimes the red, is the, is the live wire. That's the power. The white is the neutral. And the green is the earth. So now that we know that, we've got to find the right settings on this. And... Um, while I was actually looking this up to find out where the New Zealand wiring goes, I stumbled across a video by some fella called Andy Mechanic, an English guy, and ironically he had a video doing the exact same thing, wiring a New Zealand plug English power bar so he could run his tools in. Make sure you watch his video, Andy Mechanic, how to wire a New Zealand plug. This one Black's neutral, no, black is power, white is neutral. On the New Zealand plugs, this side is active or power. This one is neutral. And once again, the green is earth. It's very important to get that right. I wouldn't want to cross them over. So, power at this side, that'll be the black. And the white on this one green down there. Right, to wire these in, each one just fits underneath this tab and then you tighten it. So you don't want it to be the exposed wire any longer than this metal strip. And um, a piece of paper with it says seven millimeters. These are just a bit too long. I tried putting them in and they're Thing, so I'll just nip the ends off of it, shorten them down. Flog these pliers out of my mum's sewing room. Okay, and just make sure the ends are nice and clean. And black is live, it goes in the one marked active. Shove it in as far as it goes and then tighten the screw. Nice and firm, but of course, as usual, don't over tighten it. Now I'll just quickly do the others. Okay, they're all in. One thing I didn't check um, the cable, it should be stripped back to a length of 34 millimeters. I had this really long, I can see it's, um, it's over 40 millimeters. So the question is, will I be able to? fit it all in. If I can't, I'm going to have to trim these and redo it. This here can come off. If it was a thinner cable, like what would fit in here, I could leave this in and clamp it down. But because I'm using a thicker one, it's going to be in the way, so most likely I'll have to remove this. That will go there. And 
Okay, yes I did have to shorten a bit, cut a little piece off each one. Although I didn't waste the time showing it, I did want to mention it because it's important to get that length right to us. You can't have the main part of it inside. Then I just had to thread the wires to wherever they fitted so I can close this and tighten it up. I want it nice and firm but hopefully not too tight again. And there you have it. So now I can plug three things at once. If I can plug in a camera charger, maybe another one, two or three things, and um, plus I got a bit more length. If it's hidden behind furniture, I can plug this into the wall and have this sitting where it's more convenient. Now if you watch the video by Andy Mechanic, in it he talks about the shape of the New Zealand plug or in the and how flimsy it appears compared to British ones. Um, to go a step further, I'll say the North American ones are even flimsier still. They are just a little bit thinner usually and having that parallel design, it means um, they are more, they are much easier to wiggle and bump out. And um, so if you're dealing with an extension cord or something, it's much more likely and often that they come loose. Whereas this shape, having the angled designs, it um, sits a lot more stable, even on my adapter. Another problem with the North American ones is um, the earth lead, it's, it's very common for that to break off. Now I know a lot of t things now don't use an earth, it's just the power and neutral, but some, some appliances do, and if you need an earth, it's there for a reason, it shouldn't be breaking off. So here's a common North American plug, it's got a little round earthing prong. Here you can see it's broken off on this one. It's broken off on this one. And the prongs are bent. The way these are made is very common to find these bending and flexing. And you have to push them around to make them back how you want. Another thing about New Zealand plugs compared to North American, they all have a switch, so you can turn them off. Up is off, down is on. So I can plug in two things. Just a quick little check, flick it on, light come on. I guess it's working, I can charge my phone. And two or three other things. And there you have it. So that's how you wire a New Zealand plug to a North American power box. Just remember those two things. Um, watch the voltage difference. It's a plug adapter, not a voltage adapter. And make sure you know where the wiring goes and also take a peek over at Andy Mechanics video I'm going to link to it so you can watch it. Goodbye!